I've got a terrible story. Are you serious? A horrible story. Uh, coming out of Texas, a tragic and bizarre story. I want to thank Penny for getting this to me, but it was uh, it unfolded in East Dallas, Texas, uh, where Harriet Dyson, a pastor's wife, was found dead after shooting herself inside of her vehicle over the weekend. Now, this 65-year-old woman purportedly bought a pistol at a local gun shop just before using the weapon to take her own life in the store's parking lot. So apparently she went into this store, bought a pistol, came out of the store, got in her car, still in the parking lot, and shot herself. Now, authorities contend that Dyson killed herself with the gun after purchasing it from McEllen Gun Shop there in Dallas, Texas. Uh, it happened 2.15 p.m. Saturday afternoon. The death leaves police with few answers as the GA Daily News reports that a suicide note was not left at the scene. So my question is, did she do it on purpose or was it an accident? Could it have been an accident? She had never owned a gun before. She went in and bought a gun. Did she, did, you know, did she accidentally, was she trying to load it and, and messing with it and and, and did she accidentally kill herself? Or was it an accident? I mean, there was no suicide note. And here's the thing about it. According to the Daily Mail, uh, Dyson was married to Pete Dyson, a pastor at Park City's Presbyterian Church. The mother and a grandmother also ran Menwood One Corporation, a business that the outlet describes as an administrative and services support company. In an op-ed published in the Chattanooga Dot com, Roy Eom, a friend of Dyson's family, described the pastor's wife as beautiful. Uh, Eom's praise of the family showcases just how beloved that Mrs. Dyson was in the community. The reason I tell you this story is because my extended family loved the Dyson family very much. For years, we worshipped with them. We dined with them. We laughed with them. And yes, we've cried with them when sometimes life seems to go awry. What great Christians. What fabulous children of God. For literally decades, Harriet and Pete Dyson propped us up, assuring us that by God's grace, a new dawn was coming, as unstoppable as the new year is itself, and that if only we would place our faith, our trust in Jesus Christ, things would get better in turn. So help me, that promises have never failed us. Oh, sometimes God doesn't always show up at the moment you call out for him, but he's always right on time. And that is so true. Now, further, as Pete has dedicated his entire life to the counsel and comfort of fellow strugglers, quite often he called on Harriet, his wife, for her tender help, to which she always responded in such a loving and gentle way that neither anguish or incident stood a chance. Now this, and oh my goodness, now this. Considering that no note was left at the scene, and taking into account Dyson's role in the community, many questions are still being asked. Some are asking whether the weapon accidentally went off in the car. Others are deriving into questions surrounding Texas gun laws, and whether there should have been a longer period to say the woman's like, you know, look, so again, the Second Amendment question will continue to rise. The, those who are against the Second Amendment and the rights for all Americans to bear arms, which is protected under the Constitution of the United States of America, which seems to be under an assault lately. I'm talking about the entire Constitution. I mean, you got the Hobby Lobby folks, good Christian people, uh, that are being sued and are being fined $1.3 million a day that they don't provide health care insurance for their employees. That includes the morning after pill for abortion. They're willing to do everything else but that. No, no, no. And the government says, yes, you will. Now, here in Indiana, we just had a situation where nurses have been fired at Indiana University Medical Center in Indianapolis. Several well-established nurses have been fired because they refuse to take 
a flu shot. Some of them saying it's because it's against their religious freedoms. They're saying we don't want it. And I can tell you right now, I'm not taking one either. I'm not against anybody that does. Sure, you can take a flu shot if you want to. That's your decision. I don't want one. So don't tell me I have to. And certainly don't tell me i got to take a microchip. And also don't tell me you can take our Second Amendment rights away. And don't tell me I have to fund abortion morning after pills. Just don't tell me nothing. Leave us alone. It's the Constitution of the United States. It's the Bible. Oh, and Pierce Morgan doesn't believe that. Pierce Morgan says from CNN that the Constitution and the Bible are flawed. Both of them should be amended. Well, Pierce Morgan, we're finding you a leaky boat. You can ride it back to England with your beliefs, if that's okay with you. Uh, but then again, I'm hearing from a lot of my friends and supporters in England saying, Paul, don't do that to us. Don't curse us. Keep him there. What? It's getting a little ugly out here. Okay, now wait a minute. Let me tell you what it says in the Second Amendment since this poor pastor's wife died. And I don't believe the woman took her life. I don't. I think there was an accident. That shouldn't affect the Second Amendment. People have, people have accidents driving cars every day. Should we take all vehicles off the road? Come on. Come on. Are you serious? Come on. Here's what the Second Amendment says. A well-regulated militia being necessary to secure for the security of a free state the right of people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, period. What's so hard about that? What about that does the Supreme Court don't understand? What is it about that amendment does the Congress not understand? What is it about that amendment that some of the politicians don't understand? What is it about the Second Amendment do some people not understand? Let me read it again. A well-regulated militia has the right to bear arms. A well-regulated militia being necessary to, to the security of a free state. The right of people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. What's so hard about that to understand? It's not about Safety, gun safety. It's not about the color, the Colorado movie shooting. It's not about Columbine. It's not about the Connecticut elementary school. All of those could have been prevented had there been armed security protecting the innocent bystanders and children. The, this isn't about what the Congress are debating about. It's not the Second Amendment. It has nothing to do with your security of your protection. It's about disarming Americans for the rise of the new world order. And I discussed that. What's amazing about this, it's in my book, Mark of the Beast, RFID. I actually talk about the reason America is so difficult for the new world order overthrow is because the Americans have arms. It's actually in the book. It's one of the issues that is prophesied in my end time apocalyptic scenario. It's, inc it's incredible because now that's seven different issues that are going on now presently that I wrote in the book before they actually became major points of concern, including Muhammad Mercy is becoming the king of, of the South, if you will, or the king of Egypt, which he's proclaimed himself basically by rewriting the Constitution. Sep, also the the uh, little, little scorpion drones, I call it in my book. Well, they're in the book. All of these things are in there, and they're because... It's, the book is based on current world events, how it relates to Bible prophecy, and of course, the apocalyptic scenario that's shaping up that we are obviously in. Pray for this pastor's family. Pray for uh, the pastor. Pray for his family, the community, the church, the city of Dallas, Texas, and also pray that the United States of America leaves our Constitution alone. Please, leave us alone. God bless everybody. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We are living in the last days. Hear me when I tell you this. You're going to see more and more and more false propaganda stirring the pot. So give your life to Jesus Christ. We're running out of time.